All right, so I'm going to talk a bit, a little, well, that's a lot of people. Um, talk a little bit about organizing your CSS and SCSS. All right, so just to uh, give a little intro, my name is Joel, Joel Pan. Um, I'm currently a front-end developer, but I wasn't always. For, for eight or nine years, I was actually doing digital marketing, and I've only in the last two years or so I've come back to programming. I, I did uh, my degree in computer science, but I didn't do any programming for about eight or nine years. Okay, so um, I grew up programming. I, I learned basic when I was maybe about five or six years old from some uh, from some uh, Osborne book, um, from C, uh, Pascal C. Uh, discovered HTML around 1995, I think, with Netscape 0.9b, I believe it was, <laughs> uh, and using some amazing piece of software called Hot Metal Pro. I don't know if any of you remember that. Um, but the fact is, I've only been professionally a front-end developer for about two years. So I'm a bit of a noob. I'm woefully inexperienced, and that should tell you a little bit something about uh, how you can be qualified to come and speak here, which is, which is you don't have to qualify at all. All right? I'm curious, what's the motivation behind you change from nine year marketing to, to product? I decided I didn't want to deal with clients anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was tired of agency life, so I went to work in-house. And somebody offered me a programming job, which was very surprising, considering I hadn't been doing programming for about eight or nine years. Uh, but you know, I wasn't going to complain, so I took it, and that's what I've been doing. All right, so um, a lot of what I'm going to talk about, talking about later, may, some of it may be very basic, some of it may be uh, a little bit new. I don't, I don't know, but whatever it is, um, I'm here, so deal with it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, just a quick intro. So CSS, if you're dealing with large projects, you know, your CSS can very, very easily get very big, right? You have, if you, um, some of you may choose to put all your CSS into one file for your entire site. Some of you may have different, different CSS files for different pages, depending on how you organize or structure your own CSS. Whichever the case is, you know, the larger your site gets, the more CSS you have, the harder it is to figure out you know, where, where is this particular rule, where is that declaration, how, why is this particular thing looking this way when it's not supposed to be. Right? So your, your, your selectors are all over the place, and even within each selector, your uh, declarations, your properties may be inconsistently ordered. Um, this may, may or may not be an issue if you have a, for example, if you have a rule with lots and lots of declarations and you're trying to find that one z-index rule that you, that, that, that you just can't find. Right. So, quick disclaimer, these are just suggestions. You don't have to use any of them. They are not, these are not best practices. They are really just suggestions, how you can organize your CSS if you want to. Right. So, this is about plain CSS. <clears throat> uh, very, very simply, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you already do this, you know, just simply organize your CSS around specific logical blocks. Right, whereas your header, put all your header rules together. If it's a footer, put all your footer rules together. If it's your uh, navigation bar, your, your content page, your, one, um, your article, right? Put all those together so they're easier to find, right? Um, even better, if you, if you do that, you know, do a table of contents at the top of the, page, of the CSS file. So it's easier for, not only for yourself, but if you have team members working on the same CSS, you know, it's, it's easy to check, you know, where, how far down should I scroll to look for this particular rule, for this particular block of rules, right? So this uh, can help. Um, Obviously, you have to maintain it as well as you add more blocks. Another thing that you might want to do is to indent the rules. All right, so it, it's easier to see uh, which rules are nested under other rules, right? In terms of the selectors, obviously you're not going to indent. Uh, sorry, you're not going to nest your selectors too deeply. I hope you are not. But for those that are nested, you, know, you can do this to to help you see what they are. Another way to, to another thing to do is to sort your pseudo selectors according to the love hate rule. So it's link, visited, active, hovered, and this is just something to keep them ordered in a in a way that's consistent um, across all the different users and across all your different uh, rules. And the same thing for your shorthand rules. Uh, this is very simple: top right, bottom left. Right, it goes clockwise from the top. Um, I used to have a lot of trouble with this because I always thought of it as top left, bottom right. I don't know why. And I, I always have to go back and correct things, but just remember this top right, bottom left, clockwise from the top. Or you can use the troubled acronym to, to, remember, to remember this. Another thing you can do is to sort properties. Now, that I've given two examples here. One is to sort by box model. 
right? So you sort it in a logical way. You, you, you set the display first, and you set the, uh, the float, the margin, the border padding, and all the way down to your, to your visual styles. So, this, so if you do this, it's easier to see, OK, um, is, is, uh, is this a block or inline uh, rule, right? Everything's sorted in a way that makes sense, hopefully it makes sense to you. Uh, if this doesn't work for you, the other thing you can do is alphabetical. But whichever you do, you know, do it consistently. Right? Set, a, set, a, set, a, set a style for, for yourself, for your whole team, whatever it is. Make sure you do this consistently that you know, everyone knows what to expect. Personally, I, I like the box model rule. Uh, in fact, what I do, I'll talk about a, a, a little bit later as well, is I, I actually separate the uh, layout, st layout rules from style rules into different files. Right? So that, that helps a little bit. Group your Z index rules together. So this is one thing that uh, you can do. And the reason you do this is Z index is always a bit of a pain to deal with. Um, it's always, uh, you always have one element that's hovering over other elements and you can't really figure out why. And you, you don't know where that Z index rule is. So one way to do it is to put all your Z index rules together. Right? So it's easy to, to check you know, which, uh, what Z index value should you put for this new element that you want to insert between two other elements. Right? So have all them together in, uh, in one block. Now moving on to SAS, um, I assume that most of you here do know what SAS is. If you don't, it's, um, it's what's called a preprocessor. Basically, it's a, uh, kind of a superset, superset of CSS that, lets, that has some additional functions. I'm not going to talk about all of them, uh, but just some of the ones that will help you to organize your, your CSS. So firstly, uh, imports. Imports are, are really useful in, in SAS. Uh, being able to separate all your files, all your CSS with different files, and then import them all into a single uh, master.css or main.css that you can use uh, for your entire site. Okay, and this will this will uh, let you maintain different files for for different uh, logical blocks. And this is just one example of, of how you can, how you might want to do it. Uh, for more, uh, the other thing I want to talk about is variables. Right, in SCSS you can set variables that you can reuse later on. So for example, uh, your primary colors, your, your secondary brand colors, you can set them as variables at the top of your, of your CSS file or in a separate variables SCSS file. Right? And that way you only have to change it in one place. Right? So this is, this is very helpful. The other thing I want to talk, think about is uh, SCSS uh, functions I've shown there, Lighten. So instead of, instead of setting uh, a hard-coded color as your, as your light or darker version of the, of the brand color, you know, use the Lighten function to, to do that. So that you only really have to change one color definition. Now, if you have a really large site, you might want to think about a more complicated uh, SCSS structure. So you can um, put, for example, your, all your different modules together, your uh, utility uh, classes, your, uh, put your variables in one place, uh, put your mix-ins, your, your different, um, uh, different modules together. And at the bottom, you might want to put all your third-party uh, CSS in one place so that everything gets imported into one main uh, CSS file that your users only have to go once. It's probably a, a larger follow for the first time, but after that, you know, it's, it's cached in the browser. So this, this is just one way I've, uh, in my reference um, slide at the end, I've also included a, a link that, will, that talks about some other ways to uh, organize this tree of, of CSS files. So this is one thing that I did when I was working in the past, uh, on, my, on my site in the past two years, uh, which is to separate out the styles from the uh, layout tools. Uh, the reason I did this was because the site I was working on was not responsive. All right? So it made sense for me to have a, a layout file, two layout files for, one layout file for each uh, uh, medium that I wanted to use. So one for, one for desktop, one for mobile, for example. And that way I could keep all the uh, visual styles together in one place uh, that, that's common across all the different designs. All right? Um, this can be a little tricky because sometimes, for example, the display, for example, here, display block, right? Uh, typically, display belongs under layout, but in certain cases, for example, when you're changing the list item, it's actually a, a visual thing. You, you want it to uh, display without the bullets, right? So it's up to you to decide how you want to separate them. It's, it's as long as you do so in a way that consistently makes sense, again. And again, to go back to the Z index, if you're putting all your Z index together, you might as well put them into one file by itself. And that, and that way, you know, you always have one master Z index uh, place to look, to look for whatever uh, definitions or whatever uh, values you're putting for the Z index. Again, for sorting, for SCSS, it's a little more complicated. You have extends, you have includes, you have uh, your nested selectors, you have nested pseudo selectors. So this is 
one thing again is to um, sort them, right? Sort, sort them according to how you're going to use them, all right? So one suggestion is you put extends, start with extends, then it put, put it includes, then all your styles for that selector, then your nested pseudo selectors, then your nested uh, pseudo classes, or pseudo classes and pseudo elements, and then your nested selectors, right? And this is, as long as you do, again, as long as you do consistently, but this, I think, is a good way to uh, make it clear which are the styles that belong to this element, and then which are the styles that belong to its children. And just as a quick aside, if you're going to do uh, SES as heavily, please use source maps. It will make your life so much easier, having being able to see which uh, source SCSS file this rule is coming from, instead of having to dig through all your SCSS and, and hope that you always know where that rule is coming from. So that's it, really. That's all, that's all I have to share. So what I'd like to do is to ask um, all of you to share uh, what are the things that you do to organize your CSS or your SCSS? What are the, what are the tips and tricks that you have? I always sort by uh, It's just the one line. That's a quick one. Okay. <laughs> I just want to say that I sort my rules alphabetically because I can never remember the organization for display layout box whatever. So and like it's hard to communicate that to teams when I can't remember it. So I just tell everybody just do it alphabetically and at least you won't make mistakes. When the the box model concept came out, it was um, pretty common to see at the top of every CSS file like exactly what the box layout was mm. to sort of tell you. Um, like display, then um, like margins and stuff. But it actually show up. I can't remember. Exactly. <laughs> but I, I think alphabetical drugs is the same when I come across that because logical grouping helps, um, especially if you're jumping around. I have a question about any, which I think the boss model organization might be like a CC tool to help developers. You know, like you take a big team tool that will, when you run it, will go to your CSS, your CSS file, and then automatically like, group it for you. Is that remembering it? There are tools. Yeah, there yeah. yeah, yeah, probably there be a couple of CSS something to do that. There are. Um, yeah. There's only, it only starts uh, after the fully. As in, the oh, most of the way, it's the fully. Yeah, it's the fully. Oh, there's also a lot of no, we used to use one which does the grouping by category. No, no. all the same. Yeah. I, I didn't use that. There is one, uh, Jen, some sort of song. Yeah, it's one of the But, 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 but I, I did use it, but I realized it's kind of broken oh. sometimes. Yeah. But what I do is that I, have, um, I get like a linker, some sort of linker, so it just tells me in like, when I use Atom or Sublime, like the linker doesn't just tell me um, better, um, it'll tell me the order, and then I'll just change it, and over time I'll kind of like figure out. Um, all that myself, yeah. yeah. The best way of enforcing rules, I think, is with a linter rather than using a processor. Because <laughs> if everyone uses a processor, you don't learn anything. Yeah. Whereas um, if you're doing something like browser prefixes, um, post CSS stuff is fantastic. Because you shouldn't have to remember if it's dash moz dash for this one if you still need that, or if there's an ms prefix or whatever. So those things are really handy when that happens. Anyone else questions, comments? Yes. Okay, so when you're writing um, code, let's say in JavaScript, like you want to keep your variables close to where you have them, right? But in CSS land, like the convention is to have all your variables into like one gigantic like ver underscore variable yeah. file. So like, one thing I struggle with, uh, I think I actually can attest this, is like where do you put certain variables? Like most of the time, let's say you have like colors that are kind of used everywhere, it makes sense to have them in your giant like variables as uh, a CSS file. But let's say I'm working on this, a very specific animation, and I'm keeping the variables there. It doesn't make sense for me to like keep my variables um, in the giant like variables file because it's only going to be used in one place. But at the same time, you know, it's like this this join here when you have like variables, all the variables there, and then, like some random like specific ones nested inside the rules. So I don't know if people have like any opinions on that. I, th I think having having the variables uh, stored together at the front of the top of your or the separate file um, is usually that really applies for global variables. If you have stuff that only applies to a specific uh, element or a specific um, block, then sure, put it. I mean, put it wherever it makes sense to you. Um, I think where I, for for me, what I experienced was a lot of times I would assign a variable in a block, um, and then later find out that I was going to reuse the color somewhere else. And then I would either I would have to remember to move the variable out in front, 
or I forget to do that, and then I realize that I get errors because because at the, the, the other, in the other place that I use the variable, it's not declared yet. Yeah. I think you've got two things you have to think about. As a basic rule of programming, you declare something as close to where it's used as possible. So that's easing the confusion that you're talking about. But then, since everything in CSS is inherently global, um, you are going to start reusing something. So it's more down to what the variable actually is than anything else. If you've got a color, if you just let people declare colors wherever they like, you end up with my company, where we have 62 different variations of our, of our company blue, and that's just the blue, and just in one project. Um, so colors should be in a global. Um, something else, if you've got a custom animation, then maybe you want it within a scope. Actually, animations probably should be global as well. Uh, mix-ins, you might have close to where they're happening. Right, what? yeah. Like some set variables and mix-ins too, but it's just like within the scope of mix-in. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I had one that I did last week. I think it was a, uh, it was a custom button styling within a particular scope, and I just declared it at the top of that file rather than anywhere beyond that. I think that kind of makes sense. Anyone else? Right, um, within that you can define a global, but and then in the file that you want the context to be, you redefine another variable that references the global global. Then you, you get the context and then you still have a like, global reference. So you just need to remember that in this file is another variable, let's say is a animation A, but uh, color. So when you update the color, they get the change as well. Yeah, but that's dangerous still. Because <laughs> if you if you know it within the local context, you might still want to use it somewhere else. But really, I think it really depends on what you're actually putting in a variable. I don't know. I think I think again, all these are just suggestions. You know, use use them according to what makes sense for your project, right? If you if you're very certain that that this uh, particular variable is only going to be used within this context, then sure, put it put it where you need it to be, so that you can change it easily for, within that context. And I think that's I think that's fine, right? But if you find that it's, it's going to be used somewhere else, then you're going to remember to move it move it uh, nearer to the top of your CSS, CSS structure. Yeah, I think I think the, the problem I think I think Chris is right. The problem the problem with, with SCSS is that all these declarations are global. You don't. I don't think we. I don't think we have scoped there is no scope variables. Yeah. So you have to be careful because anything that you declare is going to be available to all the SCSS below that point. Yeah, actually, it is uh, local variables in SCSS. So if you declare, like, say, button, like, you create a button class, mm -hmm. you can do. Let's say you have uh, global colors elsewhere in a variable file, so you can have like maybe blue, and then um, that's like the hex color for blue, and then. Let's say you, you have a button class, um, and within the button class, if you do something like uh, dollar color, and you assign another <coughs> another value to that dollar color, it's gonna be only within within the, that class. Yeah, within okay. the class block. I can't remember that. So that may come in helpful. If but what, what's a class in SAS though? Like is that like a mix in or something or? Sorry, oh, within a, within a class brackets. declaration, yeah. Within oh, okay. Within, within that all right, group. fair enough. So and if, and available to all its children, I assume. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But then you don't want to run into nesting things too deep, because nesting things too deep is the work of, of evil things. <laughs> 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 but that's, that's I didn't know that. That's good. Anything else? Just one thing about managing the index. I think if you happen to <laughs> use SAS in your project, um, SAS has an index function. So it's actually possible for you to write a, a, a function to, to, to take in. So you have, you, what you have to do is you have to use a SAS list. So it will take, it will be the order of your list. So what I do is I have a function that, that does that. So what happens is, it, the order of how you declare your, your layers uh, matters. So you can name it, like maybe you're, you're going to have a fixed navigation menu and you want that to float on the very top. So the, that would be, you, you, you put that last. So maybe you could call, call that layer uh, nav menu, I don't know. 
Um, and then maybe you have something at the bottom that like, I don't know, carousel. So the carousel, so the order matters, the one at the bottom will have a higher index value. So it, it's not zero index, it starts from one, I think. So, but when you compile the assess, it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, and if you realize that, oh, I need something that goes between the layers, right? You can just put it in the assess map. And when it compiles, you just update the rest. So that, that, that's actually quite helpful. And that's if you're not using any third-party CSS, then that, that will probably work. But the problem... Uh, so I mean, if yeah. you're using CSS, yeah. you can use that. Um, yeah, the, the, uh, the issue that you may run into when you're using third-party CSS is that they have their own Z-index declarations that you need to override, or you need mm -hmm. to make sure that your your element goes over some third-party element. So is know. it third-party CSS, you're saying? Like, if, let's say you include the jQuery CSS, or you include the Bootstrap CSS, and they have, let's say they have a Z-index. Simple solution is never, oh. ever used it. Done. <laughs> 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 yeah. so, I wish Vibe was always that simple. You can just override your stuff. Yeah, you can, but I mean, then they'll update it and yours will still work. <laughs> but, um, for the Z-index, I tend to keep it in the front-end as well. And then I just inject it straight into the line as well. This leads to a question that I have for anyone who wants to answer. How do you handle third-party CSS, which is what we're kind of mm. onto? If you need to do an override or something, do you put that in the same location as you would somewhere else? Does anyone have an interesting way of handling that? Or do they try not to? I would say if you do have to, you don't, you never modify the original file. Um, yeah. Because every time you update, then you know, that there goes everything. But um, if you use, uh, even if you use CSS or SCSS, I think it's still good to, to section it its own section under overrides. So it's easier to differentiate your own original styles with because usually if you use a third party they may or may may or may not follow your class naming convention either. So it kinda gets messy. So I, I, for me I'll just either put it in a separate SCSS file or if I'm just using pure CSS, just put it in its own section, like the way he sections his stuff, put it in yeah, its own good. section of overrides. <laughs> yeah, that's just how I do it. Very good. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, so something that I've learned a little bit more recently, um, instead of just like including the pre-built third body CSS or framework whatever um, and like overriding it, a better option if you can is to uh, include the sources and then build the framework within your project. So for example, what I do right now is when I'm using Bootstrap and I want customization, I just include the Bootstrap CSS project and then I copy out the entire, let's say, variable.css file put it into my own file and make changes there. So that way I'm not overriding it, I'm just like rebuilding um, the entire bootstrap. Yeah, I'm, I'm maintaining a framework within my company and that's the method I advocate, basically. Mm -hmm. I've split everything else up so it's easy to do that, but that's the best way of doing it. So you basically create your own fork. Yeah, pretty much. The problem with that is you've got an instant legacy, but that's your burden as the maintainer. That anytime the main one updates, that you need to make sure that you're still within scope. Cool. Any other questions, comments? Everyone else's CSS is perfect. It's good. <laughs> Thank you, Joel. Yep. Oh, he has references. Thank you.